This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Smith versus Templeton. Uh, you all have been dating for four years and have two kids together. Is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. Miss Smith, why have you brought your boyfriend to court today? Well, I'm honestly getting tired of being addressed by multiple females saying that they've had relationships with him while we've been together, and some are claiming to have children with him as well. And I'm just getting tired of lies. It hurts, and I need some type of closure. I want to move forward. And honestly, whenever he looks in my face and tells me about anything, I don't believe him. Even when it comes to regular things in life, it just sounds like a lie. So, Mr. Templeton, how does it feel to know that your girlfriend just doesn't trust you? It bothers me, but I try to be sympathetic and understand where she's coming from, at least. Okay, so what are you here to prove today? I'm here to prove that I'm not talking to, you know, talking, worried about no other women, let's say that. Like, I, she's my main focus, her and my kids. Yeah, I've messed with, you know, girls in the past, but since I made a commitment to her, I haven't messed with any girls. Miss Smith, your eyebrows are way, way up. <laughs> you don't sound like you believe that he's been faithful to you. I don't. <clears throat> I don't. So, if you find out he's cheating today, what's on the line? Well, me and my family plan on moving out of state, and it would involve moving with him or without. I want to start new, and I don't want to move into a new state bringing the same thing down, the same questions of what I have here with him. So, you already... You're moving. I'm moving. Question is whether he's going to be on the train or not on the train. Yes. And you're hoping today's test will prove that he's not cheating. That's what I want. All right, Mr. Yeah. Templeton, do you understand what's on the line? Yeah, losing her and my kids is what's on the line to me. All right. So, you all have been dating four years. How did you start dating? Okay, well, we met on Facebook, and we talked on there for a long time before we even thought about being in a relationship. Things just fell right. So, what attracted you to him? His sense of humor. I like to laugh, and I need laughs in my life, so that was a plus. I liked him as a father to his other children. <laughs> Just the thought of family, we had the same views of family, and I thought we could do that together with our children. All right. Mr. Templeton, what did you like about her when you first interacted with her? She accepted my goofiness. Like, I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I push things to the limit with jokes sometimes. And she laughs at it. Instead of like, oh, that was too far, or judge me for certain things that I say, she, she accepts it. I didn't have to change or reword anything. Like, just say it, and she's with it. Now, sometimes she might be like, oh, that was... But 95% of the time, she, she laughs. And but, we... but even when you go too far, she's like, that, she you went too far, yeah. but that was funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, a, a good woman will laugh <laughs> with you, not at you. Right. <laughs> well, she'll laugh at you. No, she <laughs> no, you laugh with me. That's what I like about you. <laughs> she laughs with me. And, so. and Mr. Color, you know, truth <laughs> be told, you get a little corny, too. <laughs> and I laugh at those corny jokes. In spite of me. For the last 35 years. Last 35 years All we've right. been doing this. So, we get that. We get that. And, and it was sweet, because she had this little smile on her face, a little blush. <laughs> yeah. I like that. All right, so you have this nice relationship. You're laughing at all these corny jokes. You They're know. not all corny, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait a minute, hold up. <laughs> You're laughing at all his jokes, even the corny ones. How's that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> even the corny. All right. So, where did that all go wrong? It started with Facebook post. He started to like things women would say, like a woman would be like, oh, hey, boo, hey, baby, and he would like it. And I'm like, if I'm your woman, why are you liking somebody else claiming you? <laughs> And then, eventually, when we were pregnant with our second child, he disappeared. I mean, when you say disappeared, he was gone, like, a couple hours. Mm-mm. <laughs> couple days. <laughs> no. How long was it gone? Whole, almost the whole It was pregnancy. about a year. Ooh. A whole year? Okay. My whole pregnancy. Ooh. Almost the whole pregnancy, yeah. The... Your, your boyfriend disappeared for a year while you were pregnant? Yes, Your Honor. That's... that's you didn't false. try to call him? I try to contact him on everything. Emails, texts, phone call, reaching out to people. I got scared to where I thought maybe he was in the hospital. All right, uh, so where do okay, you think yeah. he was for a year? Of course, I feel like he's with another female. I don't know which one, because there's been so many people claiming him. I feel like he's still married. I honestly do. I'm sorry, what? I said, I feel like he's still married. Still okay, married. why do you think he's still married? Because when we first started talking, we were both going through divorce, but I showed him my divorce papers. I'm divorced. 
I never saw his, so I don't know. Are you divorced? Look, I've been divorced since August of 2012. That's not true. I, I don't, that's not true. What's, Ms. Smith, why don't you believe that? Because the talk of finalizing the papers, I believe, was in 2015. Ooh. And me and him both know we were married during the same time as each other. Daddy, hold on. She is correct. I got my years wrong. We got married around there. 2014 is when hers got finalized in July, and mine was no, finishing mine was up. earlier than July. It was about April, May. My divorce was final. Okay. okay so... so you believe he was leading a double life? Multiple lives. So while you're pregnant with his child, he's still with his wife. I'm not sure if he's with her. He's with somebody, not me. How did you find out that he had left? He wasn't responding to me. I call him numerously. I would call him to see what's going on. Text, email, Facebook messages. We add each other on Snapchat. But he wasn't snapping me. He was snapping everybody else. So, so, so Mr. Templeton, why weren't you even responding to her? Because if you want to keep bringing up the girls and stuff, that's nothing I want to talk about. We weren't talking about us or you weren't talking about the kids. So it's like I'm not about to keep going back and forth. If, if go- people keep contacting me... How would I not bring that to him? He's my man. I want answers from him, if, not them. If you bring it to me saying, like... He came here after I had the baby. And, of course, we was... Uh, he got to meet our baby. It was a good time, good feeling. But he told me he was going to see us again when we went home. And then I never saw him again. And for at I least showed a couple up to months. the hospital because, first, I knew I'm the provider for my kids. So she needed a car seat to go home. She needed clothes. So I showed up with all that and a little extra money. I had just became a mobile locksmith working 24 hours. I worked seven days a week sometimes. So I didn't get certain off days. I got my other boys. Who are you living with? Who were you living with, Mr. Templeton? I, I would stay... I would stay with my sister at times or something like that. I wasn't just staying with just random... I can't just stay with random people. Like, okay, you said your sister or something like that. It's the something like that I'm, I'm wondering about. <laughs> the right. homeless shelter what? sometimes, Your Honor. Sometimes I would go to the homeless shelter. And I'm referred to as a homeless shelter, too, when it comes to other women. Wait a minute, what? what? Yeah. What did you say? Earlier this year, a girl calls me and she's like, oh, okay, well, Deval, he called me yesterday... And he told me that he was in a homeless shelter all week. And I'm like, well, that whole week, he was with me. And I was like, so I'm, I'm the homeless shelter, I said? Because I've gotten that story before that he's been in a homeless shelter. I'm like, so is he with women, each time he says, a homeless shelter? If that was being said about me. Miss Smith, <laughs> woman to woman, mm-hmm. I am utterly confused. Yeah. You have been pregnant with his child and been alone. You gave birth by yourself. Why in the world are you all still together? <laughs> because it's not just that. Besides this, if you, this um, issue between the women, things was good. Like, he didn't do the things that he does for me. Like, when it comes to us, I know what he does for me. I know what he does for us. When I go to work, he'll give me a massage after a long day. They didn't get that, how they talked to him, about him to me. Okay, so, I'm but... like, I know he cares about me. Yeah, but you say he cares about you, but a woman needs to be treated like a queen, especially if she's bearing his children. I agree. So, you get a call from a woman who says she's looking for him, and she thinks he's at a homeless shelter, but he's with you. Yes. And so that gives you reason to believe that he's cheating. Exactly. I've seen a bunch of Facebook conversations with him and other women. And uh, I've had actually a couple of women contact me saying that he's their child's father. And of course, I want to know if that's true. So these are multiple women that are contacting you? Well, they, the women, they, for some reason, the women have born, like, formed some type of friendship with the, between each other. And both of them claim that he's their child's father. They say that they've all tried to do a DNA test. That some of them are, saying, are claiming that he'd signed their birth certificates. I, I don't know what's what. Have they showed you any of that? They you won't tell they me that. They showed you proof of everything. Have they showed you that? No. But it's my name on our kid's birth certificate. Yes. I just feel like they hating. Like, now they see what I got and they trying to break it. That's how I can always say I just feel like they just... They're trying to tear down something that they didn't have. Mr. Templeton, I hear you. I... But the problem is, it's all of these women, it's all the disappearing that has given her doubt. That's the problem. It's not a good picture. It's not a good look. And Ms. Smith still thinks there's an issue with your ex-wife that you possibly even still marry. Do you see how this is kind of mounting up? 
-hmm. to a bad picture? Yes, sir. And so she has a lingering question of, are you currently cheating on her? How do you answer that question? No. Are you still married to someone else? No. Are you involved with any of these women that are hitting her up on Facebook? No. Well, to get to the bottom of this, the court would like to call licensed private investigator Todd Redding. Ron, would you escort Mr. Redding into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. How are you? Uh, Happy to see Mr. Redding. Thank you. You and your team have done a comprehensive investigation in this case. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. The first part included a polygraph test on Mr. Templeton. Is that right? That's correct, Your Honor. Your team asked him a number of questions. Yes, Your Honor. The first question that Mr. Templeton was asked was, from September 2015 to June 2016, were you in a relationship with another woman? That's correct, Your Honor. Now, this was the time that he, according to Ms. Smith, disappeared. What was his response to that question? His response to the question was no. What did the polygraph determine? Your Honor, the polygraph examination determined he was being deceptive. Ms. Smith? What are you feeling right now? I feel like... I got one... I've been trying to believe him. I don't... Like, at the same time, of course, I felt like he may have, but I didn't want to. And the fact that it's true... But, Ms. Smith, I just want to make sure you understood the question. Okay. It asked, was he in a relationship with a woman, not sexual relationship, Okay. So, that's, that's huge. That's a big difference. Exactly. So, what I want to know, Mr. Templeton, were you in a relationship with the woman during that period? No, ma'am, no. Okay. Only relationship I was in was this one that I thought I was in. Even though I was gone, I never considered us broken up. And I'm not saying that's what the... But, no. I was not... Only person I was with was her. No, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Redding, did you do a follow-up to this question? Yes, Your Honor, I did. What did you do? Your Honor, I performed a 10-year comprehensive background check on Mr. Templeton. That involved, uh, between my team and I, over two states covering seven counties, every county that he and his alleged wife had resided in. And what did you find? We found a uh, marriage certificate dated back in late of 2010. Did you find anything about a divorce? Mm -hmm. During the entire investigation, and we physically went to the courthouses and searched the records, we did not find any divorce records. Mr. Templeton, are you sure you're divorced? Yes. I can see that you're hurting. Is this something that you need to tell this court? No. We had another question on the polygraph, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And the question that was asked of Mr. Templeton, since May 2014, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your girlfriend, Miss Smith? Your Honor, his response was no. What did the polygraph determine? The polygraph examination determined that he was being truthful. So, Ms. Smith, he has been truthful about being faithful to you sexually. And, Mr. Templeton, I'm presuming that's why you have been so upset, because you have been telling the truth. Yes. I really love this woman. I, have, I haven't been in a relationship. Like... Nicole, you know I love you. Like, my heart is really with you and our family. I don't want to lose you out of my life, ever. It's, I feel like losing you is like a piece is going to be gone that I won't ever be able to feel again, basically. Mr. West, you all have known each other for more than 25 years. You're living together. And yet, allegations of cheating have driven you to open this case. Why are you here? Because I think she's cheating. You got anonymous calls coming in. I got 
you know, thinking she's doing oral sex on other men and everything. Boy, like, okay, whatever. I think, judge, I think judge. This, hold on, hold on, I'm gonna get to you, I, I, think, I promise. You know, I, th I think that uh, enough is enough and today we come to shine a little light on the situation. Your Honor, like, he's always thinking I'm cheating. Like, it's so bad, it doesn't make no sense. I can't even go to the bathroom by myself. Like, he's always on my phone, he always goes with my text messages. I don't have no friends anymore, nobody wants to call me, like, to invite me to go places. It's like, when he sleeps, he tells me that once he goes to bed, that I have people come through my back door. Like, this is getting really ridiculous. Like, I don't so even know. So you sound like, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you're kind of a prisoner of love at this point. Yes. <laughs> How did you two meet, Ms. Belcher? Um, the way we met was, um, I had put um, this, like, little thing on Facebook, and it says, um, is there any more Laurel men out there, black or white? And he actually was one of a couple that answered, but it stood... It's... <laughs> you submitted <laughs> yeah, that to the court. Not... <laughs> Where is all the great loyal men, black, black or, or white? white. <laughs> you had been driven to your cab, so you're just like, I'm just out here, somebody answer me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like... Like, yeah, so he had, he had answered, like, one of, of, of many, but he stood out because I've always had a crush on him. Like, oh, know, look at here. Well, yes. I say, here I am, Judge. Here I am. <laughs> you say, here I am? Here I am. Uh, oh, so, my so when he responds, what happens? Well, w once he responded, um, we talked on Messenger for, like, a um, couple weeks, and then we decided, like, he came down to Charles, where I live, and um, I, think, I think I went back, I went back with him. We had, we had a great weekend, and we just went from there. All right. So, you knew each other as kids, is that correct? You, as young, young people. Yes. Yes. And you had a crush on him. Yes. You know, Mr. Cutler, I, I never <laughs> dated my crush, my true crush. <laughs> I mean... I, there, I don't there, think there, that came out right. Yeah, there, there's a little... <laughs> there's a higher level of regret in your voice than I would anticipate. So, it, I'm just imagining what that would look like at this point, like, if we... If we weren't together, if I met my... Oh, we need to move oh. on. No, oh, you no. give me... You, you, you... Yeah, I'm digging. I'm digging. OK, yeah. But do you we, understand? We, yeah, we need to stop, because right now, I'm crushed. Oh. oh. Don't feel that way, Miss Cutler. You know you my first love. <laughs> you were around... You may not have been my first crush, but you my first love. All right. Good recovery. I give you points for good recovery. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> So, Mr. West? Yes, sir. What's it like when you are first start dating? Well, we talked for a little while, and then I came down and picked her up and took her back to where I'm from, took her up on the mountains and everything, and we had this big evening plan, dinner and cookout and everything. Well, we got too close too fast, so we, we skipped the, uh, the barbecue and went straight to the house, and that's all. <laughs> Here we are now. And, and it was on. It was on. <laughs> it was on. All the way on. <laughs> And so, in the beginning, it was great. Yes. Yes, it was, Judge. And y'all both are smiling, so no, I know it was like, good. In, in the beginning, it was great. I even looked I over still love her all the things heart. that was said about him. Like, you give somebody the benefit of the doubt, but, um, you well, wrong. Okay. You so wrong, right. But you, you don't wrong. think you're wrong because you've seen the warning signs. No, sir. I know the warning signs. What, what warning signs have you seen? Uh, the, as close as that no. came to, Your Honor. No. As I went to, I went to the house uh, for a few days. We had a heat, heated argument or whatever. When you say you go to the house, you mean you... My hometown. Move okay. somewhere. Okay, yeah. so you all are, are apart physically. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I call and, uh, and, you know, we're talking about, you know, getting back together. I said, well, give me a couple days, let me finish this job. Well, she thinks I'm finished in a job up in Williamson, but I'm on my way to Charleston. So when I pull up, there's a big white car sitting in front of the house and... I knock on the door. It takes me like five minutes to get in the door. And uh, when I get in there, the whole family's sitting in there. And then, you know, this man's sitting on my couch. And uh, so I went ahead and bypassed him, didn't even say nothing to him. Whenever I turned around from the bathroom and coming back out of the bathroom through the kitchen, he's already up off the couch and went into my bedroom to get his belongings and then go to his car. So, you know that. He's gathering his belongings from your bedroom. Yes, sir. All right, Ms. Belcher, you want to talk? Come on. <laughs> okay. I honestly did not know that my ex was in my living room. A friend of mine was, had came, and she had caught a ride. Well, the ride was him. But that doesn't explain why his belongings were in your bedroom. Well, my friend had said that she had put them in there because she emptied out the vehicle. And um, him and my ex had to talk. Like, you know, um, he asked my ex. I said, well, then, you know, go ask me yourself. And, you know, my ex, like, look, man, you know, she loves you, she want to be with you. You know, I come to bring her friend, and that's it. That's, uh... And did you all have this conversation, you and this man? 
Did he tell you, hey, she loves you, she wants to be with you, it's not me? He, I called her on the phone and I told no, him, I said, no, I, or no, he called he is, her whatever. He is lying. That was right her. there face to face. I they called her face phone. to face. Hold on, Ms. Belcher, I want to hear from him. I called her on the phone after I'd left to go on to the pawn shop to get my saw. And, um... Because you saw this and you're like, I'm out, and you left. Right. So I he's said, still at the house? Yeah. Okay. That's bold. Yeah. That's a different kind of bowl. Yeah. Uh, I, he's at the house and he has this conversation with you. Yes. I, I, I told him, I said, how come you can't straighten up and, and be good to her, man, and, and just stay with her? She loves you. That's all she talks about, her, her ex-boyfriends and the rest of her past. She can't leave her past behind, you know? And it just kills me okay. deep down in my soul. Okay, you lying, just whatever. You know, I mean, every every story she tells, it's got to be, oh, I, I was with this man. Okay, well, that, 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 that's I was, not my fault if he doesn't have anything story, good you know? to talk about his past. I'm not necessarily bringing up, like, ex-boyfriends or whatever. But it seems like everybody, all his girlfriends, has cheated on him. Like, he's been the best one out of all of them. So here's my question, Mr. West. Have you heard, seen anything else that would indicate that Miss Belcher is cheating? That's funny you should mention that, Your Honor, because uh, actually the family was in there. Uh, her cousins came over and they was all in the, ba in the bedroom talking and everything else like this. And I was busy getting the house, getting the garbage up, you know. Well, here she comes with an attitude out of the blue, and I don't know where it came from. Said I'm getting her agitated and everything. Said I'm going to the store and you're not going. So I said, Well, let me go ahead and get this garbage, uh, rest of the garbage out of the truck, and y'all can go. She said, Well, hurry up, I got to go because uh, the store is closing. This, that, and the other. Well. Little did she know, I had my phone on me, so I put it on record and put it up under the seat. So when I put it up under the seat and I got it back and I, I was listening to it, I'm like, if that is not what I think it is, then that, I am definitely delusional. What do you think it is that you recorded? Oral sex, Your Honor. Okay. Hey. This is hey. what he about to see as soon as the test results come back because this is the way I see it, okay? My game is better than propane. If I was giving a man, if I was giving a man oral sex, hey, nobody, he ain't gonna be quiet. Quiet if you're giving him oral sex. You ain't. Maybe because it, are you? it happens now, so often no, that he's no. used to okay, it. Okay, whatever. All right, all right. All right. Well, well, whatever, whatever. Okay, uh, Ralph, whatever. Yeah. Boy, <laughs> bye. Whatever. Go ahead, whatever. Bob. So, Mr. West, you submitted that recording to the court. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, and we have it and here. And we have it here, and we're going to listen to it. All right, I'm going in, y'all. <laughs> Pretty good, ain't it, Judge? Let me uh, wish your wife. Mr. Conway, what is that? It ain't, it ain't, yeah, uh, ain't what he think it, it is. I, I hear, I hear the noises. Something. Is that somebody chewing? It's somebody chewing, just like I no, said it, it was. Just like I uh, said it was. Yeah, or some chewing. windshield yeah, wipers. It's very sloppy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ryan, I'm gonna let you listen. All right, then. <laughs> you tell me if. If, if you hear what you hear. <laughs> oh! Yeah, that, that's painful. Yeah, that's, that's sloppy. It's sloppy. sloppy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that's the only way to describe it. Uh, I think I'll let you listen. No, 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 no I don't. Go. I heard enough. <laughs> Hey, Ryan, right, like, you, you, you couldn't yourself Ms. Belcher, really have you okay. heard this tape? Yeah, I heard okay, it. Okay, what are you, what is this? It was I'm me, listening? me, me and my cousin. I sound, to me, it sounded like she was eating because you can hear a car door shut. I'm getting out of it to go into the store. And that's exactly what I she said. She can go to a lot of places to find a lot of men, Your Honor, but she would never find nothing that right there pretty. Oh, look at you. You might be pretty, you, you might be pretty but that right there ain't everything because I do everything for you and you're just so disrespectful. Right. I take well, love, I think we've got enough testimony. Tell me what we got. I think we've heard enough. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. West claims that she's getting late night phone calls. When he gets the phone, nobody responds. When she answers the phone, there's always a conversation. He thinks he's been sleeping with her ex. He comes home, there's a strange person in his house whose belongings are in their bedroom. And he even leaves and calls and the guy's still there. And then finally, he hears the sounds of what he believes are Miss Belcher giving oral sex to someone in a car because he's left his phone in there to record that. And all of that has led him to believe that she's cheating. Yeah. And if you find out she's cheating, the relationship is over. It's, uh, it definitely is. All right. This court has done a complete investigation 
and we would like to call expert military interrogator Lena Sisko to determine, is she cheating? How are you, Miss Sisko? I am well. How are you, Your Honor? I'm great. Thank you for coming today. You know, you often do work for us as an interrogator. Mm -hmm. But today, your assignment was different. Would you tell us specifically what you did to investigate today's case? So I went undercover as a litigant coming to the court myself because I was accused of being a cheater on my boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> did Ms. Belcher reveal anything during this conversation? She did, Your Honor. We were able to build good rapport and we did have a very open conversation. And in that conversation, she admitted to me that she did cheat on her boyfriend. And I have that tape. My boyfriend thinks I'm cheating. I have not slept with anyone. We begin to... I finally did. You what? And I told him. You what? Cheated. You did? Yeah. That Mr. Was Belcher. Mr. West, did Ms. you know Belcher, that? Did you admit to cheating? No. She I did it. She was talking... <laughs> Uh, he knows, like I did once, because I, I told him that I did. Okay. After, like, him accusing me so much and so much and so much. Yeah, he knows about that. That was that only what one time. So, this is what you admitted to him. Yes, but what I talked to you about was we was trying to find his wrestling on um, your YouTube, on your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else did you learn with Cisco? Yeah, Miss Sisko. So we did look at YouTube, <laughs> but she did also admit, yes, I cheated on him. But she did, in fact, tell me he knows about it. Okay. And so you do know about it? The one time. The yeah, one time. The one time she thinks I know about it, but there's multiple times that I think... No, it's not. No, it's not. All right. So, Miss Sisko, do you believe there's more going on in this case? I do, Your Honor. All right. Would you share that with the court? I do believe that she is hiding something. Uh, I don't know what it was because I didn't have an uh, interrogation with her, but there is something there in regards to their relationship and cheating. You're lying. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you that. All right, Ms. Sisko, would you share with her a little bit about your background so she knows what she's dealing with? I do know what I'm dealing I... with. I do. Look, you will listen. I'm going to listen. All right, and you're going to be quiet while you're doing it. Go ahead, Ms. Sisko. I'm a former Department of Defense certified military interrogator. So after the events of 9-11, I was mobilized to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where I interrogated members of Al-Qaeda and Taliban. Oh, my God. Mr. West, what are you thinking right now? I, it's just... I don't... I'm lost for words, Your Honor. It's just a hard... It's a hard nut to crack. No, I'm going to pass this test. All right. At this time, we'd like to call licensed and certified polygraph examiner Michael Williams. Ron, would you please escort him in? Mr. Williams. Hey, Rob. Rob, I'm being serious. She's lying. Mr. Williams, you asked Ms. Belcher some questions. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Belcher was asked, did you have physical sexual contact with your ex on the day Mr. West came home to retrieve his saw. What was her response? She said no. What mm -hmm. did the lie detector determine? Your Honor, the lie detector determined she was being truthful. <laughs> Ms. Belcher was asked, since August 2017, have you had sexual intercourse with any man other than Mr. West? What was her response to that question? No. Her response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined she was being deceptive. No, I... <laughs> Ralph, they're lying. That is not true, and you know it. You know it's not true. No. I knew better. Don't touch me. Mr. West, you came here to get some answers. What do you want to do with your relationship? It's finally over. It's not... I mean, I've, I've been wanting to leave her for almost two months now, Your Honor. 
You know, now I got a reason to leave her. So and not she, only she knows the reason. You all are recently married. You married a man ten years your junior, and you believe he may be playing games with your heart. Miss Jackson, please tell me why you're here today. Well, Your Honor, uh, our marriage is on the line. Okay. Um, I think he's cheating on me. Okay. With his ex-wife and multiple other women. Oh. Um. I've been holding back on sex from him for a while, you know, and I'm not, I'm not gonna change my last name into Johnson until I find out if he's cheating on me today or not. Mr. Johnson, sounds like you're trying to have your cake and eat it too. No, Your Honor. I love my wife. My wife has always been there for me. She's been there for me through everything I've been through and, you know, I've just been trying to do everything I can to salvage our relationship. Okay. Ms. Jackson, it hasn't always been like this. Tell me how you two met. Um, we got married four days after his divorce. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, like, you went from one... Oh. <laughs> so, you got divorced, Mr. Johnson, on June 10th, and you got married June 14th? Yes, ma'am. Okay, y'all ain't been married for about 15 minutes and y'all here with me? It's just that after, you know, he moved in with me in October of 2018, mm -hmm. you know, um, we was having some back and forth with his ex-wife. Okay. You know, she started sending me all type of sexual explicit messages. She's saying that, you know, Martez couldn't possibly want to be with me because of the things he said that you know, he wanted to do with her. Um, and, Ms. Jackson, you actually submitted your recollection of that text exchange between your husband and his ex-wife, correct? Yes. Mr. Johnson writes, can I come over? Want to blank your blank. Oh. No, Marty, I'm done with that. Please, you know I love you, I want and need you. Yeah. That he's still having this exchange with his ex-wife. Yeah, that's what she was telling me. So, Your Honor, those Mr. Jackson, texts... Mr. Johnson, tell me about these texts that you sent to your ex-wife. Those texts were fake. All of those texts, oh. she has an app that she developed and she placed my number in there and screenshot it and it's, you just put in whatever you wanted to say or whatever and she sent it to her. When she sent it to her, everything just went to hell. And why would she do that? I feel like she's bitter and mad about the divorce because she never thought I would do it. That's how... That's why I feel like she would do that. Ms. Jackson, how long did it take him to tell you that, you, that he was married? A uh, couple of months. It was a couple of months. You didn't lead off with that? No, Your Honor. Why not? Why would you deceive this woman and string her along only to, a couple months later, just drop the bomb on her? Well, Your Honor, at that time, all I wanted was the divorce, and she said, as long as she can keep the house where she was, then that was... That's how that worked out. I moved out of that house. That was it. All right, so it's your testimony that you are not having sex with your ex-wife. Yes. All right, that's the bottom line. Well, there's your wife's side, there's the husband's side, and there's the ex-wife's side, and she is here. Would you bring her in, Ron? <laughs> Right up to the witness. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you state your name for the court record? Najee Johnson. All right. Ms. Johnson, can you tell me about your relationship with Mr. Johnson? Well, I'm the first Mrs. Johnson, but happily, no more. Okay. Um, I'm the mother of his three children. We met in grade school. And, um... You yeah. met Mr. Johnson in grade school? Yes, ma'am. You've known him all, basically, all your life? Pretty much. Okay. All right. What ended your relationship with Mr. Johnson? His infidelity, his disrespect. I didn't want to put up with it anymore. So I left. So how do you explain the text mm -hmm. messages that we looked at? He sent those to me. He told me that, um, basically, he wanted to get back, and I told him I was happy. I didn't want anything to do with him and to leave me alone. I didn't want anything to do with him. When were those messages sent to you? Um, March of last year, something like that. And then he sent some more later on, but I don't... I, I don't recollect it at this time. 
those messages are fake. No, they're not. Because she knows I was in a relationship. And I didn't care. I'm happy. You don't see me? <laughs> I'm happy. I'm over you. That is done. I don't want nothing else to do with you. So, Zero. And Mr. Johnson, we do this every day. And let me tell you, when they fake messages, it's like, I'm gonna swing you from the ceiling and it's gonna be more information on your side. Like, I, I'm gonna do this to you. Yeah, I want you to do that to me. what else you gonna do to me? And then I'm gonna do this. And then we're gonna... Then, then tomorrow, I'm gonna do that to you. Well, won't your wife be mad? I don't care about her. I don't love her no more. Oh, well, if you feel that way, come on over. I'm coming. All right, what time are you gonna be here? I'm coming right now. See? <laughs> That's what it looks That's like. That's what a fake text message looks like. It's not, it's not this. Are you still thirsty for your ex-wife? Not at all. Look at you. <laughs> no. Did you just say thirsty? That's, That's what it sounds like. <laughs> it does sound that way, and it does look that way from why she's presenting it, but she doesn't She doesn't know anything about me. She don't know when I finish from this. She don't know so anything politic. about me. No. So, Ms. Johnson, do you believe that Mr. Johnson is cheating? I honestly can't say, but I know what I put up with, with him. Uh, he cheated on me several times. So why didn't you file a divorce? Why didn't you uh, because file? Because I'm busy at home with your children. For six and I months? couldn't afford it. So do you have any interest in Mr. Johnson? Not at all. All I want is for our communication to get better with our children. We have very, very poor communication. I'm no okay. longer the sugar mommy. All right. It's not Thank your you, choice. Mr. Johnson. What are you saying that for? She needs to know your true nature. She not needs that. to know how you truly are. I don't so, know. I know for a fact. Hold on. Hold on. Ms. Jackson, mm -hmm. when we started speaking with you, you said that you were not only worried about the other Mrs. Johnson, the first Mrs. Johnson, the ex-Mrs. Johnson, you also said that you believed he was with other women. Yes. Tell me about that. I also found messages on his phone of, of him, I guess, texting his homeboys. I have it right here. Ron, would you get that, please? Yes. <laughs> And so, you, these are things that you found going through his phone? Yes. Okay. Um... Boy, it's this sexy, mm -hmm. blank, thick, blank, sitting next to me, all over me right now. Mm -hmm. Damn, I want her. <laughs> Get a blank, bro. You scared blank? And Mr. Johnson responds, I already got her number. Mm-hmm. So, this is a text message you found in his phone? Yeah. What did you say to him after you found this? I asked him about that, and he said, I don't know how that got there. <laughs> so, it says you already got her number on here. Did you find out whether he, he got this woman's number? Yes. I went through his phone, and there's a contact of him sending pictures of a white girl and him hugged up together to all his friends, telling them just a little thing I hit from time to time. This is a little thing I hit time to time? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. With this picture? With that picture. Uh-huh. What oh. is this? Okay. Okay, like, what is this? Oh, she asked to use my phone. But I thought you... Hold on, hold on, Ms. Ms. Jackson, because, you know, he's standing here silent. I want to hear what he has to say, because we've already used his fake. We already used his exes out to get him. So I want to know, who is Boo Thing? Well, I was on my way back from Detroit, <laughs> going back to South Carolina. And, um... A uh, female asked me, can she use my phone? It wasn't like how, how it seemed like. It was, she used my phone, she brought it back to me. When she brought it back to me, the number that she used, she saved that picture and that name in the phone. Okay, so here's where I'm gonna catch you. This is what you testified yes. to. She asked to borrow my phone at the layover. Yes. She gave me my phone back. Yes. Then she said, let's take a take picture. A picture. So, and, uh, and you took the picture. But when she, you said when she gave it back to you, Boo Thing was already on there because you didn't know that she had done that. Somebody sitting there taking a picture, loading it up to your phone, you sitting right there with them, you don't know what's going on. Is that what you're testifying to? I see her. I'm gonna ask the other Mrs. Johnson. Does this sound familiar to you? Yes, it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why does this... it sound familiar? He used to, he told me about a woman before um, that he would go meet up with and have mm. intercourse. She's and that's lying. when I officially she told it wild. it was over. And... So was this woman Boo Thing? 
I don't know who she was, but it was occasional. His thing that he messed with occasionally, like he said. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I know I'm not. You know, this girl the okay. other day, too. So, Miss <laughs> Jackson, you've been listening to all this. What's going through your mind? I know if these results come back and it comes back as him, because I asked him over and over and over again, we're going to have a problem. All right. We're going to have a problem. Well, Mr. Cutler, tell me what we got. Well, I think we got a problem now. Yeah, I... I... <laughs> you know... I... I would agree with you wholeheartedly. Ms. Jackson says we think we're going to have a problem. I think we got a problem oh, yeah, we now. Got... Yeah, we got a problem. We found a, the, the hookup text in his phone where he says he succumbed to peer pressure uh, and already got this girl's number. Right. So then we have the testimony of his ex-wife saying that this is consistent with his nature and his behavior. Well, at this time, the court would like to call forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Mr. Wolf, good day. Good day to you, Your Honor. How are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. How about you? I'm great. So, this forensic voice analysis, can you explain for the benefit of the litigants how this works? Sure. When you speak, you have AM and FM frequencies in your voice, like on a radio. When you tell a lie, the FM frequency goes away. I can then look at the algorithms on my computer and I can determine where someone is being deceptive. And this is involuntary. It's not something you can control. Correct. It's no. controlled by the central nervous system. And not something you can hide, not something you can fake. No, sir. All right. Let's take a look at the first question you asked, Mr. Wolf. Have you had physical sexual contact with the white woman you met on the bus and took a photo with? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. So we can scratch boot thing out. You scr yeah, put a check in that box. Right. Nothing going on there. <laughs> now, let's take a look at the next question you asked, Mr. Johnson. Since you moved in together October 6th of 2018, mm -hmm. have you had physical sexual contact with anyone other than Miss Lakeisha Jackson? No. Mm. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The voice analysis determined that he was being deceptive, Your Honor. Mr. Johnson? I, um... I kissed a girl. The white girl. The one on the bus? Yes. I don't even think it's her, and I don't even think it's a kiss. He's coming up with that because he's found guilty. It's oh. something else, and wait, wait. It's somebody else. And Mr. Johnson, you standing up here in this courtroom, just... You just dropped a bald face one. Because the first question was, have you had physical sexual contact with the white woman you met on the bus uh -huh. and took a photo? You said no. And it says you were And you me. were truthful. So it ain't the I white girl. I don't know who it is. That's so... why I said I don't know. I don't know what that would be. I don't do anything with anybody. I'm... I'm... Okay. You know what, Mr. Cutler? Because <laughs> this right here about to make me say something. So go ahead. Uh, let's take a look at the next question you asked, Mr. Johnson. Since you moved in together with Lakeisha Jackson, October 6th of 2018, have you had sexual intercourse with your ex-wife, Miss Najee Johnson? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being deceptive, Your Honor. What? There is How no is that way. possible? No How way. How is that it's possible? Not. You all were still married then, weren't you? Yes. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. But we didn't. Yeah. We didn't okay. Have sex. <laughs> so this is not we, like far fetched, like ago. some woman, you know, off the street. This I is... can't go to Detroit, Michigan, come back to South Carolina without her knowing. Okay, you've been to Detroit since you've been. I have. Have I ever seen you besides no. court? No. Have I ever no. seen you? I cut him off. He begged to come she... home, and I told him, hell, no. This is not making nope. sense. All right, Ms. This Jackson, what sense. is it that you want to do? I don't know. And the only reason I'm saying that is because I love their kids. I love their kids, and I don't want to destroy that. 
you know, we all have to look after our kids. I mean, that is what we do as parents. But looking after your kids doesn't mean you forget about you as a person. I know. You deserve to be happy. I, I got to say, if in the first two months of a marriage, you're here at couples court, if the first two months ain't good, 12 years from now is going to be horrible. Mm-hmm. 